Hello class, welcome to today's lesson. I'm Mr. Kevin Jaggi from the School of Computing. I'll be taking you a computational mathematics. Uh, today's lesson, our second lesson, is on number-based conversion. We'll continue from where we left in our previous lesson, where we are converting numbers from one numbering system into the other. We, done, we have done a conversion from decimal into binary, conversion from binary into decimal. We've also done the conversion from a decimal to octo and from octo to the decimal numbering systems. And today we are going to look at how we can convert decimal numbers into hexadecimal numbers. How does a computer convert this conversion from base 10 to base 16. And we say that base 16, there are numbers, numbers to base 16, there are numbers from 0 to 9, and then A to F. So to do that, you divide the number by 16 throughout. As you take the remainder, then you pick the values from bottom to top. Just like we have done with the binary earlier on. So you do the same. You divide the number by 16 throughout as you take the remainder after every division. So 121 uh, divided by 16. You can do that example here. Uh, 121, you divide by 16. So you take 121, you divide by 16. You get uh, the answer is 7, remainder uh, 1. And then this 7, you divide by 16. Because this number is smaller than what you are dividing with, then again you write zero, remainder that number. Remainder that number. So that remainder seven. Then you pick the values from bottom to top to get the required uh, decimal uh, value. So uh, uh, 16, 16 times uh, remainder nine. 16, yeah, remainder 9, 27 times 16, remainder 9, sorry. So you'll have uh, like 79 base 10. So once you do that, uh, as you move down through, after every division, uh, you write the remainder. And the remainder to base 16 can be any number from 0 to, from 0 to uh, F, which can be uh, either of those uh, values. Like in this particular example, the second example here, you'll be able to see that any value that is under this 16 can take a remainder that is of this uh, nature here. When you divide 207, that is B16, 207 B10, you divide it into B16, you divide by 16 throughout and as you take the remainder after every uh, division. So you get 12 remainder 15. 12 divided by 16 is 0 remainder 12. So we don't have 15, we don't have 12 within the hexadecimal numbers, but the number A represents 10, this represents 11, this represents 12. So where we have 12, we'll represent it as a C. Where we have 15, uh, we represent it as a F, because we said that uh, hexadecimal numbers are represented using these values here, where A represents 10. We don't have 10 within the hexadecimal numbering system. After 9, we have A, which represents 10. So once you pick the values from bottom, then you'll add up with CF is 16. So again, once you've converted the decimal number into hexadecimal, you can also convert this hexadecimal number into a decimal number. You expand using base 16, like we did with other numbering systems. You expand using base 16 from the left to the right, then you add the values together. You'll add up with the equivalent uh, decimal digit. Let's have an example on that also. We have a 153 base 16. 
153 page 16. Sorry. 153 page 16. So you expand again using uh, base 16 throughout from the left side towards the right side. So this one will have 16 to power 0 times 3. You add 2. 16 to power 1 times 5. This 5. Then 16 to power 2 times 1. Then you add them together. You add them together to get the required octal number. So like in this case, 16 to power 0 times, 16 to power 0 is 1 times 3 is equals to 3. 16 to power 1 is 16 times 5, you end up with 80. And then 16 squared uh, is 256 times 1. Then you add the values together, you end up with the required octal number. So you expand using B16 from right towards the left, and the power of 16 increases as you move towards this end. If it was a fractional number, again, just like we have done with binary and decimal number, let's say uh, power 12, so, so point 0.12, again, we'll now start the power of 16 to power negative 1, starting from this point, towards this end. We'll have 16 after the decimal point, this one. We'll have 16 to power negative 1 times this one plus 16 to power negative 2 times these two. So every time you have a fractional number, whether it is hexadecimal, octo, or binary, you start with the power of negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, as many numbers you have towards the, the right side after the decimal point. So the power increases. Then you add the numbers together. Then you'll end up with a fractional number, just like we have the fractional hexadecimal. Like in our case here, 339, you'll have a 339 point, the value that you get after you perform this fractional Competition, let's say 0.45 uh, bis, bis uh, 10. Bis 10. So that is how we perform the hexadecimal into decimal conversion. Another example on that conversion 3F6 uh, bis 8, that's, a, that's an octo. So hexadecimal uh, into decimal, sorry, this, this is a, a mistake here. This is supposed to be B16 uh, into decimal. So when you have 3F6, again, you have this kind of uh, competition. 3F6, uh, B16. Each number here you expand using B16, you'll have 16 to power 0 times 6 plus... 16 to power 1 times this value now. Here, we don't use half. We use the value equivalence to half, in this case, which is 15. Plus 16 to power 2 times 3. Then you add them together. In our previous example, uh, this example here, you said that uh, after 9, the next one is A is equal to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So where there is F, just like in this example here, where there is F, we represent with its equivalence a value. And in this case, this is 15. Then you add the, the values together to get the required uh, decimal number. So that way, you'll have converted the hexadecimal number into the hexadecimal number into, into decimal. You'll have 10, 14, this 10. Every time you expand using the B16 for hexadecimal as the power increases towards the left side. If it's a fractional number again, 
from the decimal point as you move towards this uh, towards the right side the power of 16 in, uh, move increases again from decreases from negative 2 16 negative so negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 negative 4 with as many numbers that you have towards the right side after the decimal point because again hexadecimal numbers can also be fractional numbers so they can also be uh, whole numbers then we uh, we can also convert from binary into octo in this case now these are internumber conversions remember we have converted from a decimal uh, the binary the octo and the hexadecimal So after converting from decimal to binary and vice versa, decimal into into uh, so, uh, decimal into octo and vice versa, decimal into hexadecimal and vice versa. Then you can also perform inter-number conversions where you can convert a binary number into octo and back. You can also convert binary number into hexadecimal and from hexadecimal into decimal. These are inter-number conversions, uh, which is also possible from base 2 to base 8, from base 8 to base 2, from base 2 to base 16, and from base 16 to uh, base 2. And also even from octo to hexadecimal and back. So we are going to look at these two uh, ca categories of inter-number conversions. We will start with binary to octo, and then from octo to binary. So to do that, to convert an octo number into a, a binary number, remember, octo numbers are numbers to base 8. And every octo number, which is under base 8, is represented using three binary digits. 8 is as a result of 2 to power 3. 2 to power 3 is equals to 8. So every binary, every octo digit is represented using three binary digits. Like if you're writing a number like uh, two, this will equal to zero, one, zero. These are three binary digits representing the value two. If it is three, zero, one, one. This is equivalent to the number three. If it is four, one, zero, zero. And again, uh, the way we get to this four, like we did with decimal to binary, when you divide four by two throughout, as you note the remainder, you'll add up with this, 100. Zero, zero. If you divide 3 by 2 throughout, as you note the remainder, you'll get uh, zero, 011. One, one. And the process continues. So, octal numbers are represented using three uh, binary digits. So, every octal number is, an octal digit, Sorry, uh, 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 in this case, we are converting a, a binary number into octo. So, in this case, you take the number and the binary number and group it into groups of into groups of three because octo numbers are represented using three binary digits, like we have explained here. So, you take the binary number and group it into groups of three. Then, for each group of three, you convert them to the equivalent. Uh, octo digit. In this case, we can use an example to understand that concept. So we have, uh, we can have uh, a number like, we can have a different number, we don't have to use that one, that is already there. So, so we have, let's take a number like one zero zero one zero one zero one zero. So these are binary number which we want to convert uh, into octo. So we have said you divide the number into groups of three binary digits because every octo number is represented using three digits. So from the right side towards the left into groups of three. Zero, one, one, two, three. Those are three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. Let me add some digits just for uh, a different clarification. Let's assume this was the original binary number, one, two, three. So if there are two, or if it's just a one number, you add zeros to make them three. 
Like in this case now, we have one, two. So you add a zero there, they, you make them three. Just in case they are not uh, equal to three. So you divide into groups of three. If they are not, the, whatever remains from this head, you add the zeros to make them three. Then for each, for each uh, three bits, you convert them into the equivalent octal number. Like in this case, zero, one, zero. This is the number two. One, zero, one. This is number five, the octal five. One, zero, zero. This is the, the octal four. And zero, one, one. This is the octal three. Then you put the digits together. So you add up with three, four, five, two, base eight. Remember, you divide the binary digit into groups of three. Then for each group of three, convert them to the equivalent uh, octo digit. Then you put the digits together to form the required octo digit. So this binary will be equivalent to uh, that 452 base 8. We can do another example, one more example for that conversion. Uh, in this case, you have this number, 11001111101011. When you convert it into octo, you divide into groups of three from here. 1, 2, 3. This is 1. Uh, 1, 2, 3. Uh, 1, 2, 3. And 0, 1, 1. For each group of three bits, you convert to the equivalent uh, octo digit. Again, I made a mistake here. It's always supposed to be base 8. So this 0, 1, 1, it's a mistake there. This is supposed again to be 3. This is 3, sorry. This is supposed to be 7. There's an error there, but you can uh, do it here the correct way. You can correct it here. This is a mistake in that example. So we have uh, 1, 1, uh, 0, 0, uh, 1, 1, uh, one one those are four one zero and then one one so you group it into groups of three one two three one two three one two three and one two three zero one one this is the number three one 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 this is the number seven zero one one this is the number uh, three and 110 this is the number 6 these are the octo equivalents of these three bits 6 is the octo equivalent of 110 3 is the octo equivalent of the binary 011 71101 uh, 3011 then you put them together again 6373 this 8 so you add up with the octo equivalent of these a binary digit. We also have, uh, we can also convert now the octal number into binary. We can convert this octal value back into its binary equivalents. And to do that, for each, it's the reverse of this process, for each octal digit, you convert them into the equivalent three bits. Then you put the binary digits together. For each octal digit, you separate them to be independent digits. Then you convert to the equivalent a binary value, and then you end up with the uh, binary equivalence. In this case, three, the binary equivalence of three will be uh, zero, one, one, seven, one, one, three, zero, one, one, and 6 is 110. One, These are independent values. Then you put them together. You add up with 110, 011, 11, 2. That would be the binary equivalence. Each octal now is converted into its equivalent three bits binary number. Then you put the values together to get the required a binary number. And there we have an example like 253 uh, base 8. 3, you convert it into its equivalent binary number in terms of three digits, which is 011. 
5, uh, 1, 0, 1, and 2, the same. And remember, to convert these numbers into the equivalent binary number, uh, you divide by 2 throughout, just like we did with the binary numbering system. You divide by, by, by 2 throughout. Like, like in this case, uh, 5, to convert it into 1, 0, 1, you divide by 2. 5 divide by 2 it is 2 remainder 1 so let me just get the, the other head here 5 divide by 2 you have uh, 2 remainder 1 2 divide by 2 is 1 remainder 0 and 2 divide by 2 is 0 remainder this 1 then you pick the values from bottom to top. Zero, one is two. So at this particular point, when you say five is equivalent to one, zero, one, uh, then uh, we convert five directly into its binary equivalence. In our first topic, uh, we, have we have done this conversion from uh, decimal and from octo to binary, and that is how we do it. And then you put the values together to get the required uh, binary equivalence. And at this particular point, uh, as we move on with this, or we come to a conclusion of this numbering system, you're supposed to be able to know the binary equivalence of all the octal numbers, 0 to, uh, to 7, and the binary equivalence of all numbers from 0 to uh, F, from 0 to 9, then A to F. That way, becomes easier even to perform this uh, number-based conversion. In the second example, again, the same case applies. For each number, you convert to the equivalent three bits, then you add them together, you add up with the required uh, binary digits. You also have a binary into hexadecimal. And to do so, remember, binary numbers, oh, sorry, hexadecimal numbers are numbers to base 16. So 16, again, is as a result of 4, sorry, not 4, 2 to power 4. 16 is as a result of 2 to the power 4 is equal to 16. So all the hexadecimal uh, digits, they are represented using 4 bits. Just like we have said with octo, which is this 8, 2 to the power 3, all the octos are represented using 3 digits. Again, to convert from binary to hexadecimal, you divide into groups of 4. Then for each group of 4 bits, you convert them to the equivalent hexadecimal number. Then you put the values together then you'll get the required hexadecimal digit. An example of that is this, 11100011110. So you divide into groups of four from, again, the right towards the left, one, two, three, four, which is this, uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, sorry, this is a mistake there again. They're supposed to be four, they're supposed to be a zero. And then this, you'll add up with three of them, you add, you have one, 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 then a zero. So once, if there are three, you add a zero at the, at the end there, then you convert each to the equivalent uh, binary uh, value. And you end up with such a, an hexadecimal value. Let us look at another example on how you can convert uh, a binary number into an hexadecimal number. Remember we have said uh, for every binary number you divide into groups of four bits then uh, for each group of four bits you convert them into their equivalent into the equivalent uh, hexadecimal value for instance in this case we have this particular uh, number you divide it into groups of four from the right towards the left one two three four which is equal to one zero one one which is this number this is equivalent to the value B. Then the next four digits, uh, 0, 1, 1, 1, the equivalent to D. And then the, the other four digits, 0, uh, 1, 1, 0, the equivalent to 6. Then the last two, 1, 1, because there are two, they cannot form a four digits. You add zeros on this particular add, which, which you add up with the value 3, which is equivalent to the hexadecimal three. Then after that, you add these digits together. You put them together, three, six, D, B. 
to form the required hexadecimal number. Again, uh, we have said hexadecimal numbers are numbers to be 16, which is uh, where 16 is as a result of 2 to power 4. So for every four binary digits, you represent them into one hexadecimal digit. So hexadecimal digits are represented using four binary digits. This simplifies the structural representation of data because, as you can see, if four binary digits are, representing, are represented using one letter, then when it comes to data representation, you are able to have few characters representing more digits, like we said in our first uh, topic where we say that when you use hexadecimals in color representation and data representation, it simplifies the many digits that we use in binary numbers because in this case we'll have four times four, which is 16. Instead of representing 16 digits, this one, then you are able to represent them using four digits. And that uh, simplifies the structural design of computers. Then we have uh, hexadecimals into binary. To convert hexadecimals into binary, it is the opposite of that process. And therefore, uh, for each hexadecimal digit, you convert them into the equivalent uh, four bits a binary digit. And then after that, you put the values together to get the required hexadecimal number. You can work that with an example. We have two, uh, six, nine. Two, six, and nine. So these are hexadecimal values. For each hexadecimal digit, you represent using four binary digits. Nine is represented using one, zero, zero, one. Six, uh, we have a, so yeah, we represent them using zero. It's a, so, sorry, 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 let me, six is a one, one, zero, they need a zero here. So this is the, the, the number is six, zero, one, one, for four digits. For octo, you represent using a two digits, that's why I was writing one, one, zero. But four digits, four digits, and two the same, four digits. Uh, one, zero, 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 four digits. Each hexadecimal digit you represent using the equivalent four bits. Then you put them together. Zero, zero, one, zero. Then zero, one, one, zero. And this one, zero, zero, one is two. So you add up with the binary equivalence of uh, 269 in that order. So again, for each of these, you convert them into their binary equivalence in four bits, then you add them together. There's another second example here. You do the same. Where there is a hexadecimal F, you represent it with its actual equivalent number, which is 15, which is a Represented as one one one, seven is zero one one, triple one, and five is zero one one zero. So you put them together, you end up with that binary equivalence. You do the same, and then we have octo numbers into hexadecimals. Octos are numbers to this uh, eight. So from this eight to this sixteen, here first you convert them into the equivalent binary digit. There are two processes involved here. Then after that, for you put the binaries together, then you divide those binary numbers into groups of four because we are divide, uh, converting from octo to B16. B16 are represented using four values. But initially, the binary equivalence of the octos are in three bits. So you put them together, then you divide into groups of four, to groups of four. Let's work with an example. Uh, in this case here, we have 253. This is an octo. For each octo three, you convert to its equivalent three bits. Three is zero one one. Five is one zero one. And two is zero one zero. This. 
So please uh, you convert to its equivalent three bits. Then you put the, these three, three together. You add up this binary number. But now to convert it to hexadecimal, like we have done in our previous uh, section, you divide into groups of four. So you add up with one, one, uh, zero, one, forming one group. Then the other uh, zero, one, zero, one, forming another group. You'll add up with the zero on its own. You add three other zeros to make them four, zero, 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 uh, on their own. Then for each group of four, you convert to the equivalent hexadecimal value. Zero, one, zero, uh, one, zero, one, one is equivalent to B, hexadecimal B. This is equivalent to A, and this is equivalent to zero. And then you add up with the value zero, A, B. And a zero in front of a number doesn't have it any effect. So you can do away with it. So you'll have AB is 16. Then the last example, you have uh, uh, 567 is 8 octo into hexadecimal. You do the same. For each, you convert it to 3 bits. Then you divide into groups of 4 bits each. Then you convert it to the equivalent hexadecimal number. And you add up with 177 bits 16. Then we have hexadecimals uh, into octo, our last uh, conversion. Uh, first, you convert uh, each digit, each hexadecimal digit into its equivalent four binary digits because, again, hexadecimals are numbers to base 16. To base uh, 8, here the numbers are represented using four digits. So every hexadecimal value convert it into four bits, binary digits. Then those binary digits, you put them together and divide them into groups of three. And again, for each group of three, you convert to the equivalent octo. It's closely related to what we have done with the octos to hexadecimal. And this is how you do it. You have four, A, six, B, 16. Six, you convert to their four bits. A, which is uh, 10 represented as that and then four this is supposed to be two yeah there's an error there again so this is supposed to be one zero zero then you put the values together then you group them into groups of three bits because again we are converting to octo to groups of three to groups of three then this you convert to its equivalent octo into octo and then you add up with a specific uh, octal number, what results from this conversion. And then you have another example with uh, alphabetical letters for the hexadecimals. This you convert to their values. This is 15, this is 11, and then uh, this is 9. So 15 is 111, uh, 11 is 1011, and 9 is 110. You put them together, then divide them into groups of three. From here, uh, once you put them together, one, two, three, one, two, three, again, one, two, three. Then for each, you convert to the equivalent hexadecimal number. Then you put the values together, just like you have just stated. And you add up with an hexadecimal uh, value. That's the end of our second lesson. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era, and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.